Well, no problem. So I think we can start now. It's uh, 1.30, so we will start our presentation. So uh, welcome. Uh, I'm happy to welcome you for this uh, new seminar from the well, webinar for, of the CRDIG, the Research Center on the Spatial uh, Geospatial Data and Intelligence. Uh, yeah, originally it was supposed to be a, a seminar, so in a class. Well, still open online, but uh, unfortunately, uh, we were not able to make it, so it's uh, exclusively online today. Uh, again, the presentation is recorded, so once it's finished, uh, it will be made so in a few days uh, available on uh, online on uh, our YouTube channel. Uh, so to, for today, we are quite happy to welcome uh, Ali Afghan Toloi, so who is uh, our presenter today. He's a postdoctoral fellow in, a, in the Department of Geomatics here in Laval University, and he's also quite a freshly graduate still from the Department of Geomatics also. Uh, so his research interests are more, more related to navigation and to uh, sensor deployment. And so that will be mostly his uh, topic of his presentation today about the deployment of uh, sensor networks uh, to help for the navigation of people with motor disab disabilities. Uh, so Ali, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, hello everyone, uh, I'm Ali afghan I, I'm a postdoctoral fellow at Lowell University. Uh, I've got my PhD, uh, uh, Recently, I today I'm going to present my PhD thesis that is entitled to optimal deployment of sensor networks in indoor environments in support of navigation of people with motor disability. Uh, this presentation encompasses the research context, the research problems, uh, objectives, conceptual framework, methodologies, results, and discussions. Uh, Finally, in this presentation, I will finish uh, with some conclusion and uh, future works. Uh, nowadays, social participation of people with disability is one of the challenge problems in our society. According to Statistic Canada, 22% Canadian age over 15 years have a type of disability that represents six. 0.8 million people. However, only 10% of this population are fully included in our society. Uh, according to uh, Fujay Rolas and others in 2010, mobility is the most important life habit of uh, people with disability, which impacts their social participation. The concept of mobility is defined according to different scales of locomotion, such as postural transfers, daily walking, driving, and sit. Mobility is also defined as moving from one point to another. Uh, in this research, uh, we considered the indoor environment uh, because many environmental and architectural factors complicate the movements and interactions of people with disability with the indoor environment rather than the outdoor environment. For example, the presence of multiple floors, complexity of indoor structure, fusing signs, and presence of people more complicated people with disability mobility in the indoor environment. And navigation systems as the assistive technologies can improve the mobility of people with disability in the indoor environment. However, the positioning as an important process in navigation system is a challenging task, especially in the indoor environment, since the GPS does not work in the indoor environment. We need to use other types of sensors, such as cameras and Bluetooth sensors for positioning and monitoring the indoor environment. Sensors de uh, deployment need to be optimized in terms of the number of sensors and coverage of sensor network. There have been uh, some potential global and local optimization algorithms that move sensors to the optimal configuration. Uh, the global algorithms such as genetic algorithm uses cost function to statistically uh, 
uh, to stochastically move optimization algorithm like a, a two-dimensional burner use the topological relations to move towards toward the open not being adapted to the complex 3D indoor environments and also not uh, prioritize the environment coverage based on the activities of people with disability. Hence, the research question is here is what type of sensors work to deploy them better by people with disability. In particular, the people with motor disability who use wheelchairs in the indoor environment. The general objective of this research is creating a smart and interactive indoors and in, indoors environments to better guide the people with motor disability during their mobility. In order to achieve the general objective, three specific objectives have been defined. The first objective is proposing a new local optimization algorithm for sensor deployment in 3D indoor environments. The second objective is proposing a new conceptual framework for assessing the mobility complexities from uh, people with uh, motor disability perspective in the indoor environment, here, legibility assessment. The third objective is uh, developing an optimization algorithm for multi-type sensor uh, deployment in the indoor environments to, to help mobility of people with disability. Uh, to achieve these objectives, uh, three methodological phases were organized. First, uh, uh, phase was to optimize the sensor deployment with a complex environment layer without consideration of the activity layer. Then the second phase was to create an activity layer. In this uh, research, the legibility layer of the indoor environment for people with motor disability. The last phase was to optimize to a uh, multi-type deployment with environment eligibility. Now, uh, let's talk about the first phase. Uh, since the global optimization are costly processes, we use the diagram approach, which represents sensors position. Network. This can be used to manage the sensors movement toward optimal configuration. For moving the sensor toward the optimal location, we need also to use the environmental information. Hence, uh, we have uh, proposed a new framework considering the interactions of environmental elements and sensors. In this framework, the 3D diagram is used for the representation of sensor uh, for integrating the environmental information in uh, the optimization process. We, also incorporated the 3D indoor GML data model proposed by OGC. The main structure of indoor GML divides an indoor space into the multiple spaces called cells, such as corridors, main halls, and rooms. In addition, each cell contains different surfaces that are classified into walls, uh, uh, floors, and ceilings. Does, we use all this information for coverage estimation and providing a new movement strategy for sensors toward the maximum coverage. Uh, our algorithm of sensor deployment optimization was divided into initialization and while loop. In the initial, first we ran. On the digital surface. Then we calculated the coverage of whole network. Then we created a 3D Warner base on the sensor position. Afterward, we initialized a priority queue based on the highest coverage gain value for each sensor. In the while loop, the sensor with the highest coverage gain moves to its new position as its local optimal position. Warner diagram. Uh, then is updated, then the coverage gain for move sensor and its neighbors are calculated. Finally, the priority queue is updated based on the move sensor and its neighbor coverage gain. 
<clears throat> probably <clears throat> you have this question in your mind, how we move the sensors based on the 3D Bornoi and environmental elements. Here, for sake of the simplicity, I present the sensor movement in the 2D space. In the first step, uh, we move each sensor toward the uh, farthest vertex of its Wernery cell. In order to discover more uh, spaces, then the repulsive forces were added to keep the sensor away from the obstacle to reduce the coverage gap. Afterward, the sensor must be projected to the nearest deployable surface to maintain a sensor on, on the wall or ceiling. Uh, the ceiling that, that need to be installed in, on the surface. Uh, here, the, uh, this is the 3D representation of sensor movement process. You can see that in the figure. Uh, also, uh, you have this in question, uh, this question, uh, how we calculated the sensor coverage, the coverage value of each sensor in a 3D vector space <clears throat> was estimated with different steps as follows. First, we eliminated the invisible surfaces that lie out the sensing view here, O1, O2, and, and F1 surfaces. Then we projected the remaining surfaces onto a perspective plane, which is defined parallel to uh, the floor surface. Uh, and finally, we sub subtract the hidden surfaces O1 from the surfaces covered by sensors here, F3. Uh, to, or, uh, to do our methodological approach, we consider Quebec City Convention Center as our case study. Over 200 uh, events are held in this con convention center building and more than 200,000 people visit this center annually. For collecting our data, we uh, utilize a GeoSlam Zebrevo model to collect the indoor 3D points cloud. Then we extracted the 3D model from the 3D point clouds. In the next step, we added semantic information in each sp space of this building. Uh, then we differentiated the surfaces into walls, ceiling, floors, classes. Finally, the indoor GMO format as an indoor standard model proposed by OGC was created. <clears throat> to show that our proposed algorithm reached an optimal uh, coverage, we compared uh, uh, we compared our algorithm with the genetic algorithm and with the covariance metrics adaptation evolution strategy, CMAES, as two examples of global methods. We tried out several experiments for deploying the different number of cameras with 30 meter sensing distance, respectively to four, six, eight, and 10 in fourth floor of convention center building. We presented the average uh, base coverage, standard deviation coverage, and computation time in this tab table by running 100 times for each algorithm. Uh, the results showed that the best performance time belongs to the 3D Voronoi compared to GA and CMA. And uh, also, our algorithm leads to the number of cameras was more than compared and CMA. Yes, Ali, sorry, maybe okay, now you can, we you can close uh, your, your camera, Ali. Maybe you can close your camera to help uh, to improve yeah. the sound. Oh, okay. Camera. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, we develop an efficient optimization algorithm for sensor deployment by having complex layers so far. Now let's talk about the second phase. Uh, second phase how to create the activity layer here, the legibility layer of indoor environment. 
according to Lynch in 1960, the legibility of environment is defined as the degree of ease with which its part can be organized into a coherent pattern. That means how easy people can understand their surrounding environment. Our purpose framework for legibility assessment <clears throat> inspired by a uh, DCP model, disability creation process model, they, they define the disability is a result of interactions between people and the environment for doing a life habit. <clears throat> Therefore, according to DCP, we define the legibility of an environment as a result of interactions flow between a person and his environment when uh, these are oriented toward a specific purpose, uh, like carrying out a life habit. In this case, uh, uh, we can say that the mobility task. Now the question is, uh, is what is the relation of legibility with human environment interactions? O'Neill in 1991 described mental representation of humans' per perceptions from their environment in that makes a link between the physical environment performance. The personal cognitive map is formed in humans' mind based on the interactions of person and his environment <coughs> with uh, iterative sense plan act process during mobility test. Hence, we propose that the easiness of personal cognitive map and the degree of its support to mobility performance is conceptualized as legibility of environment. As you see in this figure, based on our visual sense, we can observe the elements and based on the affordance and information, we can choose our actions. <coughs> Here, uh, corridors afford the go-to action sign provide the information of destinations. Uh, according to our proposed framework and the relevant literature on legibility assessment, we have used different uh, effective factors for legibility calculation. One factor that influenced the estimation of legibility is level of visual access. Generally, better visual access to a location implies better legibility, which can be calculated by ESOVIS as a visible area from a viewpoint. Another key factor in determining legibility is the level of connectivity between the spaces. The degree of connectivity is negatively associ associated with legibility. This factor can be calculated based on the axial lines method. And the complexity of buildings layout is an another factor. Complexity can be characterized based on the result of topological analysis on navigational graph. This factor can be calculated by uh, interconnected density, which means the number of edges that uh, reach the vertex of navigational graph. Uh, in this research, we uh, propose the level of accessibility as a new effective factor for legibility assessment. Facilitators such as elevators and obstacles such as stairs have a large salient impact on a person using wheelchair compared to other environmental elements. Visual saliency is one of the attributes that can help us to measure the level of differentiation of an object from its surroundings. We calculated the level of accessibility based on the confidence level of person and visual saliency and visibility of facilitators and obstacles in the geotag that equivalent to person's visual schemas. As an example here, the left figure indicates a stairs that is seen as an obstacle with high uh, visual access and with appropriate saliency by person with using a wheelchair while the elevator is not placed within the vision range that leads to this person becomes uh, more confused and stressful. 
for uh, estimation of color and contrast of our study area to measure the visual saliency. We use the tag video convention center. people with motor disabilities, we captured the geotag video from wheelchairs height. For implementation, we use the fourth floor of convention center building for calculating the legibility. First, uh, we divided the floor space into a grid. For each point in the grid, we calculated the level of each factor. The red color shows the highest and the blue color shows the lowest value for each factor. Finally, we obtain the legibility layer of the building by overla uh, overlaying all the created layers corresponding to each factor. As you can see in figure, the corners of the main hall regions, six and seven have the highest legibility. The low legibility regions are located in regions one and two, which are uh, before the main inter intersection and region three near to the escalator and region four, which is the latest entrance to the main hall. Uh, we have developed our uh, optimization algorithm by integrating the environment layer. Also, we have uh, created the legibility layer. Now, uh, let's talk about how we integrated the legibility layer and environment layer into the optimization process. As previously explained, we propose a local optimization framework for sensor deployment in the indoor environment based on the 3D Voronoi diagram and indoor channel. To better support the mobility of people with motor disability, we integrated the legibility information in the sensor deployment process. Uh, we purpose here to use a indoor GML structure, indoor GML layer for the representation of indoor environments and information on the sensors node and connection between them using the 3D Voronoi diagram as a 3D Voronoi diagram layer. And finally, a legibility layer for managing the information of the interactions of people with motor disability with their environment during their mobility tasks. Uh, we proposed the purpose-based local optimization based on the following steps. First, uh, by having legibility layer, we, uh, we prioritize the covered environment where is more important for guiding people with motor disability, indeed, where the legibility is poor. Hence, uh, we defined a new purpose-based weighted coverage estimation based on the legibility layer sensors position, sensing model, and the environmental model and legibility layer. As you can see, to estimate this coverage, a visible surface were covered, uh, were covered to a grid. Uh, every point in the grid has a coverage value, uh, has a coverage value which varies as a function of sensing range and the visibility between the sensor and target and the inverse normal legibility value. We also uh, in, uh, propose that the movement strategy for the sensors is not only toward the, uh, toward the forces vertex, but uh, also toward the lowest legible, uh, legible spot within the sensor's burn cell. In, in addition, uh, we propose the higher movement steps for sensors which have higher sensing range. Then uh, a sensor can only move when its new position has the highest uh, uh, purpose-based weighted coverage gain in the network. To evaluate uh, the efficiency of our algorithm, we designed different experiments for deployment of different types of sensors, including cameras and Bluetooth uh, devices with our algorithm and CMAES algorithm. The results showed that our algorithm had a lower execution time compared to a CMAES algorithm. 
In order to better compare two algorithms, we credited a Venus square for the algorithm that had higher coverage uh, and lower standard deviation for different categories, including the, the average, minimum, maximum, and standard deviation for 100 runs for each test case. Based on the win counts, the uh, purpose-based uh, 3D Voronoi algorithm gave the higher uh, counts in all categories. Uh, as the discussions and, and conclusions of this research, we developed a new local optimization algorithm based on the 3D Voronoi diagram and indoor GML. We found that the computation of a time of or approach was six times lower than uh, other global algorithms. Then we proposed a new framework for assessing the legibility of indoor environments for people with uh, motor disability. <clears throat> we uh, also integrated different factors, including visual access, connectivity, complexity of building layout, and level of accessibility as a new extended factor for uh, people with uh, motor disability. A disadvantage of this research was that we considered the equal weights for each factor to create the eligibility optimization approach uh, with the integration of information from sensors, the environment, and the legibility layer. We found that our approach had a better result in terms of coverage and the standard deviation compared to CMAES algorithm. As the future works, uh, case and source deployment uh, to increase the accuracy of positioning is a challenging task, specifically in the movement strategy. Also creating sensor networks within a lim limited directional sensing field, like a directional cameras for mobility application is also challenging task. We need to propose a rotation strategy beside the movement strategy for each sensor as well. In addition, we need to better explore the correlations between each factor and the different user profiles to uh, determine their importance ways in legibility calculation. There are also actuators like, like dynamic screens that can be deployed in the indoor environment to inform users uh, the accessible uh, pass, the accessible and optimal passes, and uh, that need to be optimized as, as, a, as a network. And last but not least, we need to work on other user profiles with other difficulties, such as those who have visual, auditory, or uh, cognitive difficulties. Uh, thank you for your kind uh, attention, and I would uh, welcome any question at this time. Uh, uh, but thank you very much for your presentation, Ali. Uh, now we'll uh, move to questions uh, from the floor. So you can either uh, raise your hand and uh, answer, uh, ask your question on the mic, or if you prefer, you can also write your question in the uh, in the chat or so in the discussion. So any question to come there? <clears throat> Eric, um, yes. Oh, it was yes, me. Mir. <laughs> yes, maybe I can I can start uh, with a simple question with for Ali. Uh, um, Ali, thank you for your your presentation. Um, there was some um, problems with the sound, but hopefully people could follow uh, uh, the presentation. Um, you, you talked about sensors. Um, can can we imagine uh, to combine other facilitators in in the optimization process? For example, uh, for sure you want to guide people with uh, uh, with knowing that where they are in terms of their position, uh, 
but also there are other facilities, for example, signs on, on the walls. And uh, do you think that the method that you would, you proposed here uh, could help also to combine uh, those types of facilitators so that um, uh, we can uh, further optimize uh, the routing uh, of those people in uh, within indoor environments. Uh, yeah, that, that that is a really good question. As I presented in this presentation, I mentioned as a future work we can use actuators, and uh, actuators like a, like a, some uh, that that. It's it's kind of like working as a sensors, but it's they can modify what happens in inside the environment. For example, the dynamic screens is is can be considered as actuator because based on the person and based on the uh, changing in the environment, the screen can be changed. And also, if we can, uh, for example, add the motor for science, we can change the position inside the, you know, uh, inside the uh, uh, building on the wall or on ceiling. And this is, yeah, th this could be uh, integrated in, in my optimization algorithm, but uh, before that, we need to define what is the coverage based on those actuators. For example, uh, the speaker is other actuator and the, the modeling is different than the camera. And we need to see, okay, what, what is the visibility and uh, how the sounds affect? Is there any reflective surfaces affects to that? Uh, first of all, we need to define what is the coverage for those actuators. And then uh, based on the, the, the coverage area for those actuators, yes, we can integrate the environment and the, the position of actuators and the estimation of coverage for those to also move these actuators based on the Borno, the 3D Borno. But more important, importantly, it's considering the, uh, the, the model of actuators, how we can uh, define the, the estimation coverage and how we can um, put the weight for different grid or different target inside the corridor or on the floor. Uh, this is more important than the integration. And, but the easiest, the way, uh, the easiest part is the movement strategy. The movement strategy can be used for those actuators also, but uh, as, I, uh, as I said, it's more importantly how we can define the coverage estimation. Okay, so thank you for your answer. Uh, are there any other questions? Uh, you hope yes. we have one question on the in the chat, yeah, so I wrote it because I, I think it's a long question. Um, uh, so uh, Ali, Ali, you you mentioned you were using Estimote, and I was wondering if you can tell us tell me a bit more about about this and and how did you deploy it. How did you use? How many did you use? And and so on. Yeah, uh, you uh, yeah. I you actually I used. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, I actually used the the uh, the, the simulated model. It's, it it was not the real Bluetooth, but I used the Estimo uh, uh, profile to define um, the, the model of Bluetooth. Uh, maybe I can show you the. Uh, uh, the the type of model that I use for Bluetooth based on the Estimo. Uh, yeah, here, uh, yeah, the, the, you can see the camera model and Bluetooth model. I use the uh, uh, these uh, the parameter for the Estimo for defining what is uh, how the range, how the the distance can affect the coverage, uh, and actually the signal. The signal to receive the the, the Bluetooth uh, from you know from the device like a phone, and uh, and and I also considered the wall uh, 
affect the, the, the thickness of the wall and also other obstacles to, to calculate how affect the, the coverage output. Uh, the, the estimate, I, I just consider what, what is the range of this device based on the, its profile and how the signal can, can be, uh, how the, the wall uh, can be affected on, on those signal of the estimate. And yeah, but uh, there is no real STMO. I didn't deploy the, the real devices on, on the, you know, uh, on the place. Uh, but yeah, th this is, this is uh, the, the future work can be, can be used for uh, evaluating uh, this model can be true or not, because I use this, uh, I define this model based on the profile of STMO. And uh, for the number of sensors that you, Ask me, I, I, for the simulation, I use different configuration of the number of sensors. Like uh, I started with four, six, uh, and, and eight and 10. And then I, uh, I added more uh, sensors to see how uh, the, the, the problem is go going, uh, going uh, more complicated based on, the, based on increasing the number of sensors. Somehow it's it makes uh, uh, difficulties to to converge the optimization process, but somehow it's not. It it, it was depend on the uh, environment also. It was not just the the, the range of the sensor. This combination of uh, all of those factors. Uh, the, okay. Did I address your question? Uh, yes. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, um, Eric and Ali, uh, if you permit, uh, in the answer to the question, uh, also just just to say that we just received our <laughs> our sensors uh, this week. So uh, the next step for sure, it will be really implementing uh, this um, um, the whole idea for sure. These are a part of sensors that we have received for positioning. But uh, there are other boxes in, in my office, as you can maybe see. So we have cameras and other uh, types of sensors that would be combined to uh, instrument an environment. So that is, a, a, let's say, um, mostly what, what you saw, a simulation of uh, the environment yeah. where we can um, put sensors with specific characteristics. Uh, and for the next step, for sure, it will be uh, intervention in the study sites um, and uh, maybe real uh, experimentation with the sensors. So that is. Yeah, actually my simulation can be helpful for deploying the sensors inside <laughs> the environment. Before, the, it's like a pre-step for developing new system for navigation. It uh, can be necessary for uh, initialize the, the, the new uh, system, like creating a smart environment. It's very important to, to know where we can put our sensors. And this is a, uh, sure. very useful. Okay, so yeah, thank you. So uh, we'll still move to the next question. Uh, so it's still in the chat. Uh, Mariam is asking if uh, one of the sensors is broken. Uh, the, oh, okay. If one of the sensors is broken, if you can, uh, your model can reconsider this. Yeah, uh, I didn't consider the lifetime. The lifetime, the, the lifetime of sensor is other objective of the network, but it's necessary to consider as a coverage problem, and we need to. Uh, I, I didn't consider this in a network, but we need to remove. Uh, like delete the sensors in the network. Not only we need to move sensor based on the 3D Voronoi, but if the lifetime of sensor is done, it's we 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 need to remove the the sensor and update the Voronoi diagram based on this deletion. And also when the new sensor come, like like the uh, we turn on the new sensor. We need to insert the, the, the new point into the 3D Worm diagram. Uh, and this can be, can be uh, 
can be integrated in the in the Vor 3D Voronoi diagram, uh, but it's some somehow is tricky to to move sensors, and we need to priority. Uh, it, it's like we can make uh, the uh, we can use the priority queue based on the highest uh, coverage when we do any action. For example, we insert the sensor, we remove sensor, or we move or we rotate. What what we can do, we can check based on the uh, priority queue what happens and uh, we can decide which which is a good strategy based on the highest uh, coverage band uh, that that can be yeah, integrated and before uh, it was integrated in the work of uh, Mesam uh, Argoni but it was in the 2D space uh, he actually used uh, the deletion and insertion of sensors in in his work Okay, thank you. Are there other questions uh, so far? No. Uh, in that case, I still have a question, uh, Ali. When you talked about your 3D model, so you said you captured all the information there, you had a, a 3D a G, a GML model of your building and so your floors. Uh, can you add in your model, do you take into account furniture or other obstacles that uh, can be there? Uh, yes, that, that, that. That can be, uh, yeah, that can be integrated. Uh, but you know, uh, because I use, uh, I, I capture data, I, I just accurate the data with the GeoSlam. And as you know, the problem of working with 3D point cloud is segmentation and then modeling the, the surfaces and meshing the points. And it was difficult for me to consider the furnitures because modeling each of them it took a lot of time for, for me. I just considered the, the, the walls and ceilings and some obstacles, some uh, uh, obstacles, surfaces like, a, uh, <clears throat> like a, uh, a columns inside the, the main hall. Uh, yeah, but, but it, could be, uh, it could be used uh, in, it, it could be modeled in the indoor GML. Uh, furniture is part of the model. It can be se uh, semantically modeled in inside uh, based on the geometry and also based on the topological uh, information. Okay, so yeah, in a way it can be considered that you would simply add in your 3D model, add the, the furniture or the obstacle after, uh, later on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are there other questions? No. Oh, there's some more. <laughs> if you don't speak, you can stop your mic. <laughs> you hear someone tip. Uh, so, well, I'll go with another question also. In that case, if you have a floor, so as you show in your model, you show that uh, you were, you showed example where everything was on the, on the same floor. Uh, in that case, if you all at the same floor, logically, all your sensors should be at the same elevation. So is there really a need? Does it bring really much more information to have a 3D uh, optimization or placement of your sensors? Uh, yeah, uh, it's, uh, you know, the, the space of the sensor, the, the, the deploying sensor is not the same as the coverage area. Uh, before you know the researchers, they they consider both as uh, in the same level. For example, the floor uh, is considered as the, the the covered area, and the ceiling and wall, it's considered as a deployable area, and they are not in the same space in the same dimension. And that's why it's better to use three D dimension. And uh, and there are different height of ceiling in the uh, you know, complex building, and we cannot model. Uh, you know, based on the two D space, uh, uh, we need to have the different information of the different height of ceiling to consider the coverage. Uh, otherwise, we 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 cannot uh, uh, correctly calculate the coverage and the visibility of each sensors to uh, toward the the floors and toward other surfaces also. And, and that's why it's necessary to manage 
the, 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 the optimization process uh, on, on the 3D, uh, on the 3D space. And the interactions need to be uh, considered in the 3D. And uh, especially 3D Warner, it, it, it helped me to, uh, to consider the, the connection between the sensor, the interaction of sensors, and indoor GM will help me to consider the interaction of environmental element. And with my method, I consider both together to, to uh, achieve the better configuration of sensors, to achieve the better coverage. OK, because your sensors are on the, uh, located on the ceiling. So anyway, they can only move in 2D. Uh, yeah, if the height is different, cannot move in 2D. And also, I consider the sensor on wall also. And okay, there's also sensor on the wall. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, still have time if you, someone wants uh, to ask a last question. Uh, if there is no question, I can add a comment. <laughs> yeah. Maybe for 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 the for the sake of information. We, we have uh, another ongoing project, uh, which is uh, iMobility. And uh, in that uh, project, uh, we, uh, we concretely want to instrument a, 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 a part of a hospital for uh, a healthcare establishment and, and then try to help people uh, to, to move and also mostly evaluate the the um, value of these kinds of technologies in terms of social innovation and helping people with disabilities, especially for people, uh, for aging people in their mobility within very complex and large buildings uh, as we have it in uh, hospitals. So uh, just uh, finish on that. Yesterday I have been in, in an activity on a smart cities in Quebec City and there was a, a lady who was um, blind and had a, a daughter. She was blind too. And they were uh, just uh, bringing in, uh, a, a kind of experience that they had uh, reaching for a social activity, for example, uh, going for a pool. Uh, so really uh, listening to their history of how they would manage to, to leave their house. And first of all, plan their, their, their travel in the city to say that, okay, then the Quebec city, we have, uh, for example, 20 um, uh, covered pools and which one is accessible for them. And then starts the navigation part in terms of planning and getting to that. So um, the role of geomatics in these kinds of uh, projects, not only we, for, for sure, we, we want to help their um, action of mobility by these kinds of projects, but also providing accessibility information, which usually, uh, which is usually not a part of traditional databases that we have. And also uh, most of the information are uh, uh, traditionally concentrated and available in outdoor environments. Although for those people, even in outdoor environments, we have a lot of uh, limitations, but but when it comes to the indoor environment, it's, uh, almost we don't we, we have nothing about about the buildings. So it's a kind of um, movement to say that not only uh, we want to innovate by sensors and these things, but but measurements in very detailed uh, sense of measurements with lidar or other technologies uh, in just a bathroom or in pool or in a uh, corridor uh, would be uh, the, the next steps where uh, we, we should bring it to, to, to the uh, population. Uh, there is 3D uh, modeling, dynamic modeling, and all of these aspects are uh, important, real-time modeling and streaming uh, because sensors, okay, we place those sensors and they are streaming uh, data that contributes also to advance of uh, advancement of the knowledge in, in terms of uh, assessment of those information, massive information in real, uh, real time. So all of these aspects are a kind of uh, 
perspectives to Ali's works. So uh, hopefully we will be continuing this activities, uh, these activities uh, um, from now on. Merci beaucoup. Well, thank you. Uh, any more time for a question? No? Okay, well, thank, well, uh, thank you, Ali, for your presentation, then. Uh, thank you very much also for the attendance uh, there to join us today. So that's the end of our presentation. As I mentioned, it's been recorded and so should be available later on uh, you, our YouTube uh, channel. Uh, so for the for us as a seminar, we'll, uh, we'll have another seminar next month, so 15th of December. And uh, the guest speaker will be Antonio Ferraz from the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, so who works in uh, and where they do research on uh, forestry and uh, remote sensing. Uh, so again, thank you very much for your time and uh, hope to see you at the next uh, webinar. So still online, uh, we should send the announcement in a few days. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Merci.